speaking of personal decisions, any plans to bring Xactimate to the Mac operating system? You know, I've heard that one a lot. Uh, we get a lot of internal pressure as well. Uh, I have a Mac. Uh, I like using the Mac. I would like to be able to use Xactimate on it. Um, we're a ways out, right? Before we would, yes, I see it. Beautiful MacBook Pro. <laughs> <laughs> They're great machines. They really uh, we're a little bit we're a little bit of a ways out for that. I will tell you though that with um, with Xactimate Online, uh, we're in the process of a rewrite right now, and you're going to see a lot more be built directly into uh, you know, HTML5, uh, JavaScript in particular, with uh, you know, the technology React and. Uh, you know, eventually you'll be able to do everything you need in Xactimate directly in Chrome. Um, and so it's coming, it's just taking a little bit longer. It was tied to uh, Internet Explorer and Silverlight, uh, but it it is being rewritten as we speak. We do have a beta out right now, um, but eventually you'll get to the point where you can at least write an online estimate uh, on a Mac in Chrome. Welcome to Adjust Your TV Radio, Aaron. Um, why don't you give us a little bit of a, kind of your background and your role at, so is, are, is it Verisk? Like it's like, the, that's what everybody's yeah. title is. Like I'm the blah, 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 of Verisk, or are you still like, is exact where do you still say exact where? Yeah. So for the for the time being, I still say Xactware. Absolutely, you know we're all part of Verisk, uh, but the business unit is Xactware. Okay. So a little bit of background on me: I have been at Xactware for uh, twenty years now. Uh, I started. Dang. That's actually kind of interesting. <laughs> I was thinking about it the other day because I hit my twenty year mark uh, just about a couple weeks ago, and I was thinking I have spent more than half of my life at this company, which is kind of interesting. I don't know a lot of people that can say that they've spent more than half of their life. Not these days. <laughs> so yeah, it's been great. It's been, it's been a ride. Um, I started out in technical support and I've had probably about eight or nine different positions since then. Uh, so I was a trainer for a while. I did account management, I did sales, I did testing. Uh, I did project management uh, for uh, exact contents at the time. Uh, I had started uh, claim experience and, and one experience uh, a few years back. And uh, now I oversee the products for uh, exact work claims. So that's going to be exact to made exact analysis, uh, claim experience, contents track, uh, et cetera. So, uh, I have the responsibility, the the, the privilege uh, of of serving those great products and making sure that uh, uh, we do a good job in building out uh, a lot of the the new innovations without uh, disrupting uh, our customers and and what they do today. So, sure, which is sure. always a challenge. Well, yeah, I can imagine, especially with a company that has that is such widespread adoption as you guys do, especially with your kind of the, as far as from our perspective, kind of your, the signature thing that we always use and that's exact to mate. Um, you still have a major part of, you know, the vast majority of the market share as far as I know. Um, so you guys are, you're kind of the leaders, I guess, when it, when it comes to this kind of thing. So on that note, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about sort of what your perspective um, as a company that is that is heavily vested in this industry, um, what you guys kind of see, like sort of the near term and maybe the middle term, the future of claims handling, the way that things are kind of shaping up these days. Like, what do you guys like see in the next, you know, two to eight years? Yeah, I mean, eight years is a long way out. It is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You'd be pushing thirty years. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, but we've heard this for quite a bit, for quite a while. We've been talking about it for quite a while. We're, we're headed towards automation. That's where a lot of investment is going in this industry. A lot of it is around data analytics, machine learning, and, and frankly, automating uh, steps in the process. Now, are we talking about automation end to end? 
No, but I think that, uh, you know, as we look back to the video that you released in in uh, in December, uh, right, which captivated my attention. I think you did a great <laughs> job with that, by the way. Um, yeah. you know, really, what it comes down to is we're supposed to be helping uh, and augmenting you know, the workflow right, for all participants involved in the claim. And, you know, to the extent that you can augment that that workflow by either taking some steps out of it and automating those steps or just making it smarter, faster is really the objective. And, you know, for, from what I'm seeing and what I think we'll continue to see is we'll see the policyholder engage, the, the policyholder will be involved in their claim when they choose to be, right? And this goes back, back to what eSurance said many years ago when I think their their tagline was, technology when you want it and people when you don't. And I think that that's still going to resonate with, with people for uh, many years to come. And, and we want to be able to provide that technology for one, uh, when the policyholder wants it and when they want to engage, but it does have to be very clean and it has to work very well uh, with pretty much a, a, a zero learning curve. Uh, for those types of scenarios. If you're an auto claims adjuster or appraiser, you already know that SCA is one of the top companies that you can work for on the auto side. But if you're a property adjuster who's never done any auto, you may have never even heard of SCA. But you've heard of them now. SCA Claim Services is launching their property division and they're poised to bring their decades of claims management experience and extensive resources to the property side of things. Insurance carriers already trust SCA because they know they will always receive a high level of customer service and policyholder satisfaction. And with literally millions of claims handled in SCA's four decade history, carriers trust SCA to help them avoid unnecessary costs by handling every claim, every time with unparalleled accuracy and a commitment to doing things the right way. I mean, these guys are old school, right? Since 1979, SCA has been exceeding expectations. Only a company dedicated to serving and taking care of people, including their adjusters, can a company like this continue to grow in this industry. Join the team with industry-leading NPS scores and cycle times that has the resources to bring new opportunities for not only auto adjusters, but now for property adjusters. To get started with SCA Claim Services, head on over to adjustertv.com slash SCA and while you're there, don't forget to download the totally free SCA Claim Services Field Adjuster Gear Guide. Again, that's adjustertv.com slash SCA to download the free gear guide and to apply. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's it's uh, it's interesting. And I ask, I, I'm often asking folks, um, especially on the IA firm side, um, what what things look like. We've take, kind of taken the temperature um, periodically of, of sort of where things are at in the industry. And a couple of years ago, there was a lot of pessimism, um, especially with all the, you know, maybe three years ago that the, a lot of the carriers wanted to go to, to a fully automated or even a direct repair where a contractor was, uh, he was the one or she was the one scoping the loss and sending it straight to a desk adjuster in some, you know, call center or whatever somewhere. And finding that they were getting mixed results. And, and then a couple of years later, like this year, people are like, well, you know, we really feel like the role of the adjuster is still is, is as important as it ever was um, because of like what you said, as far as, you know, you it's, it's a people person job. I mean, a lot of the claims that I think homeowners are gonna be, yeah, you know, I'll just use the technology are gonna be, well, they've got a section of fence blown down in the backyard or, you know, it's a, somebody stole the grill off the, the back deck, right? So, and then if they have like a fire, even if you have just a, a what seem might seem like a minor kitchen fire, it's, you need a person there. You can, the homeowner's not doing that with their phone, you know, and you don't, you know, you can have, a lot of companies try to do direct repair with contractors with mixed results, um, but somebody still has to write the estimate. Um, you know, you, machine learning and everything, I think, you know, is, We've talked about it before. It, it, they're 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 great augmentations, I think, to the, the claims process. And I'm I'm really having been an adjuster for as long as I have. Um, there are parts of the process, and we talked about this, like I said, that take a long time, 
right? That are just a matter of just, there's not a whole lot you can do to slow them down. But one of the big ones is measuring things, right? So, and you and I have talked about, um, and some folks on your team, they're like, well, you know, we foresee that maybe the active measuring stuff is, it's slowly but steadily kind of going away. So what do, what are you guys up to as far as, you know, sort of maybe automating the measuring process? Yep. So can I, can I address one of your points uh, that you yeah, made yeah. before around DRP programs, right? And we see that, right? We see yeah. that in other markets, right? And when you look at Canada, that's a pretty big part of the market in Canada where they do rely pretty heavily on the contractors. And we've had insurers that uh, have relied on that particular model in the past. And sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. And, you know, typically you'll find when, when you have cat events, that's what disrupts some of these models, right? That's where yeah. there is a very strong need for an, you know, an adjuster, somebody to be on site to let the homeowner know that everything is going to be okay. And it's all going to be, you know, many of these things are going to be circumstance based, right? Based upon what the preferences are of that customer, where some people very much would prefer to just do it themselves and get after it. And others really need that handholding. And so to your point around, you know, just as a people person job, it very much is right. That's a really important aspect of it in terms of ensuring that, that, that net promoter score that every insurer uh, cares about is persisted and maintained. So I, I think it's, you know, that's where you'll see, and I think Mike Fulton talks about this in other podcasts, but that's where I think a lot of the attention will turn is really around the experience of the customer and and really helping to hone, you know, kind of the emotional intelligence of the adjuster to ensure that they're really ensuring the customer being the policyholder uh, have their needs uh, taken care of. But I think that's really where uh, things will be going. And, you know, on the back end with technology, we will make it smarter. We will make it faster so that they're not having to do so much focusing on the computer. They can focus more on the customer, right? And so that really kind of weaves into your next point where you want to drive this, I think, which is, you know, the measurements, right? The measurements has always been kind of, I used to do trainings and I, you know, people would say, when are we going to have this little ball that I stick in the room and it shoots lasers and, you know, captures all the measurements and scope and right. Right? you've probably heard it before too. And you've done training, <laughs> but yeah, totally. you know, we're, we're getting closer. All right. If you look at like what Matterport does, right. A lot of contractors are using Matterport now where they have, you know, highly sophisticated cameras and they are very accurate uh, to the inch where you can do a great walkthrough and you can capture measurements. And I think that's a wonderful technology. Uh, what we are doing right now uh, in Xactimate Mobile with LiDAR so that you can capture those measurements much more quickly by just literally taking an iPad or an iPhone, scanning around the room and having that, that room automatically placed in sketch uh, very, very quickly and very accurately as well. And so they are coming um you'll have variation because it's still going to be dependent upon the environment it, it's still dependent upon the user and how they use that device as well in terms of of how accurate it is but same thing with a tape measure right yeah right exactly <laughs> in, in many respects right i mean you still have variation there and, and i think that we've seen that in a lot of the qa um uh, processes as well through exact analysis yeah yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I don't think it can really be understated um, how important it is to have an accurate uh, measure, measurements and like, I guess, diagram of the area that you want to write an estimate for. And, you know, you take your laptop, I take my laptop inside on large water losses or fire losses, and I have got a little laptop stand over there. And I put my laptop down and I measure the room and I take my photos and I write the scope or write my estimate in, in the room as I go. So that by the time I get back to the front of the house, the whole estimate's written. If, if I had something and I had to take all my measurements and everything and get the measurements around the windows and get the measurement of that piece of trim and this thing over here. If I had something that, again, like hover, you know, where you just take eight pictures in a circle or around the house or around the inside of the room or whatever it is, and it will generate, especially if it's instant 
a it'll put my sketch into Xactimate Mobile right there, and maybe it'll, you know, I I know I've seen this in the past at uh, previous conferences, but you know, identifying personal property items in the room, you yep. know, and making an inventory of those at the same time. I mean, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's, we're, that we're would getting take close. A, yeah, it's like a three to four to five hour scope and write down to, I mean, an hour or less, I think, because if I, all I had to do is, because it's a, a big part of taking a lot of time, it's like drawing it out and square. Well, I screwed up that corner. I got to redo that. I forget how to do the, how do I do a, put a closet on there? Where are the doors at? You know, if it's doing certain, if it's more automated, and I think that makes the adjuster a lot more effective, allows us to have a more consistent uh, product you know, quote unquote, because our, the estimate that we write, if they're, if you could send 10 people out and they get within a hundred dollars of each other, because they're using a good, a really, really reliable, advanced, accurate technology like that. I think that it helps the, the customer. It helps the carrier. It helps us um, because then we can focus on the customer service side of things and negotiating with contractors and all those other things that we have to do. Plus all the phone calls and everything else we get. If we can mash that all that work down into a much smaller time frame and have it be more accurate. I mean, that's, I can't wait. I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with on that regard. You know, facing a lawsuit can be a terrifying and stressful experience, jeopardizing your years of hard work and success. If you don't have adequate insurance coverage as an adjuster, you're putting yourself at great financial risk. If you make your living from handling claims as an independent adjuster, then you must get errors and emissions and general liability insurance coverage. It doesn't matter if you're a 1099 or a W-2 or you work carrier direct, protect yourself with professional liability insurance from Kaplik. To find out more and to download the insurance for adjusters free guide, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV. That's cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's a journey like anything else, right? Sure, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And there's a lot of right when you talk about the the contents track, for example, where it automatically identifies the contents cleaning items and, you know, shows the linked item uh, directly uh, within contents track. That is where we're, where we're pushing on, right? So related to contents, uh, doing both material and damage recognition inside of the home. And so you're, you're absolutely right. That is, that's, it's coming. The piece parts are there. They're just making their way into the application and it takes time too, right? I mean, sure. You know, for you to use, you know, this iPhone right now, right? This you can use the uh, AR measure functionality that's built into Xactimate Mobile. Uh, so it'll create a sketch, but it's not probably, it's not going to be, you know, always to the inch accurate, right? And so when you need that defendable measurement, right? So when somebody's going to reinspect your estimate. You, you do need to have something that not only is consistent, but is defendable so that, you know, when you do get dinged for any kind of, you know, uh, reinspection uh, issues that, you know, you can stand by it. And so that's why, you know, in, in some cases, the technology might not have uh, been adopted. I mean, we created something called SketchCamp that just used, um, you know, the the different, you know, components in the in the device. And, you know, on a 10 foot wall, you might get, you know, 10% accuracy. And, you know, that's not nearly enough to, to defend uh, the claim. But, you know, we're, we're really making progress on this. It will be device dependent, right? As you've seen in the past, we've had disto, uh, you know, laser measure uh, integrations, but it, it just takes time to get used to those, those kinds of things as you're uh, moving forward. But I think that the team has done a really nice job, especially from what I've seen with a new LIDAR capability uh, I really think that we're right on the, the the cusp of being able to really speed up the time that it takes to get a sketch created. Sure, sure. And listen, I, I think that that reasonable people, myself included, I like to think I'm a reasonable person, um, recognize that there's a kind of a march of technology. You know, like 30 years ago, you know, you could dream up an iPhone, but there just wasn't a technology for the batteries weren't, you could get a battery small enough to power an iPhone for more than a minute, probably back then, the, the computing power and everything else. So as, as all these new technologies, like the LIDARs coming out on 
the iPhones and the iPads. Um, we have to be patient, you know, I think is, is what, you know, what kind of really what it comes down to. And it's, I think you guys are in a unique position because you have a lot of resources to kind of work to, to sort of, you know, be able to develop those technologies, but also to sort of like kind of sort of outline the roadmap to where things are going based on, you know, your kind of vast research and all of your relationships that you have in the industry. So you want to talk a little bit about the roadmap for Xactimate? Yeah, well, and, and I'll, I'll speak to it, you know, across multiple products. When, when we, you know, a lot of our customers will call us exact, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and that's because you have exact made, exact analysis, right? Exact contents that's kind of caught up into that mix. And, and so, you know, one of the things that we're really pushing uh, hard on right now is the measurements piece, right? As we talked about uh, being able to get those measurements. And, you know, when we talk about the op open ecosystem too, right? There, there are other players out there that have wonderful technology that talk about Matterport. Eagle View does a really good job in terms of getting, you know, a roof diagram created and have that imported directly into uh, Sketch. And you talked about Hover, right? You know, eventually, I hope at some point, you'll have a nice clean integration uh, directly into Sketch uh, with that. So I think these things are starting to align. What's that? I said, oh boy. I mean, I, I well, say it all the time. I'm just really impressed with Hover, but I mean, having that pop just pop into Xactimate, oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, just it, it, it'll take time, right? Uh, we, we've, you know, we've had a lot of great discussions and um, we're, I think at some point we'll, we'll see it happen. Is it going to happen overnight? No. Uh, but it, it will eventually happen, I think. Um, uh, where I was going is that measurements, right? I think that we're really starting to get really on the close, right on the verge of having that nailed down, right? Both for exterior as well as interior. The next piece is really going to be the automation around the scope, right? It's how do you help somebody, you know, when you think about the vast number of line items and uh, circumstances around a property, it's very different than an automobile, right? <laughs> when I know the make manufacturer, right, in the year of that vehicle, I can pretty much look up about any part for it, right? But for your home, right, even what I can see behind you, I, I, I don't know exactly what that material is. I assume that's brick, but you know, that could be a facade and you know, there's a lot of details, right. That, that right. go into that. And so one of the really important things that we're working on right now is something called smart scope, uh, in exact And what it's going to do is it allow you to answer questions that are scenario based, right? So let's say for example, that, that, that roof comes in, uh, let's say it's Eagle view or you drew one, or let's say that you even had a, a hover, right. Where you copy one in, um, Let's say, for example, that you do get that roof in, you'll be able to answer a series of questions that will automatically scope that roof uh, for you. So you'll basically go through and identify okay, what type of, uh, first of all, where is the damage? You can basically select the individual faces, and then you can answer a series of questions, pick the appropriate depreciation, and it will automatically populate the uh, the appropriate line items, right? So in terms of, you know, trying to find the appropriate macro and then going and fine tuning it and then making sure that you apply it to the right faces. Uh, this is something that uh, I think that once you see this released, it's something that is really going to have a positive impact on the industry. So to the extent that we talk about, you know, having estimates being written fast and also uh, having quality estimates written, I really think that this is going to have a very positive impact on the industry. So that's that's for both exterior and then we also have an interior model uh, that we're building out right now, in particular focusing on uh, water mitigation. You ever feel like you've been thrown to the wolves by the IA firms you work for, like you're just a number on a roster? Wouldn't it be nice to work with a firm who's big enough to get plenty of work, but still small enough to know you by your first name? Then let me tell you about my friends at the Oklahoma-based IA firm, Paysetter Claims Service. Founded in 1997, the thing that sets Pace Setter apart is their relentless pursuit of excellence. They hold themselves and their team of adjusters to a higher standard of quality. And now with their advanced all-in-one claims platform called Evo, you'll get a real-time Uber-style map and communication link to the insured, automatic messages sent to customers throughout the process, 
file review automation, and fast, accurate scope with Paysetter's partnership with Hover. Hover is integrated directly into Evo, making for a smooth and seamless field scoping experience for you as the adjuster. Technology is moving faster than ever, and Paysetter is right there at the cutting edge. And Paysetter is bringing training to a city near you. Check out their summer tour dates at adjustertv.com slash Paysetter. So it is so that's, as water. Oh, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, so that's that's one area that, that I think that you'll con continue to see some innovation around, and then you'll eventually see uh, image interpretation uh, being woven into that, right? So when you do capture the measurements to the extent that we can pre-answer some of those questions that are built into that script, uh, that'll also be one of those things that save time to where you can basically go through and validate those things and then apply the scope directly within Xactimate. So, and then what about ex exact analysis? I mean, is there, you guys have any any big changes or anything coming down the on the roadmap that, that uh, um, are gonna be significantly different than, than, you know, what we see now? I mean, I, I think exact analysis is, is from what, from my experience with it, it's, it's always been like, it seems like it's a finished product. I mean, when I, when I get into exact analysis, it just makes sense. I, I know where I can find everything really easily. Um, what do you guys kind of foresee for the future of exact analysis? Yeah, so when you think about exact analysis and you think about it in the context of managing a claim, managing assignments, right? You have the workflow component and, and making sure that that can be very efficient and customizable. Right. And so as it relates to exact analysis, there's quite a few things that we're thinking about in terms of improving the workflow. Uh, things as simple as notifications, as simple as having the ability to communicate more easily in and around a particular assignment than just kind of the, you know, the sequential notes. Right. Th those are things that we are looking at, you know, even to the extent that you might be able to respond to a text message and have it uh, update a field in exact analysis, like a date contacted, as an example. Uh, those are things that we're pushing on with exact analysis and then the ability to customize the, the workflows and then make those workflows rules dependent, right? So to the extent that uh, particularly we're thinking about this, you know, on, on the, uh, the contractor side in terms of SLA management, or, you know, even, even the same thing applies, I think on the adjuster side as well. So that's, that's one area that we're looking at. And then the ability to add new capability in, uh, and, and this is still really, really early, but we're, we're really pushing on the low the no code uh, technologies in order to manage the workflow right so the 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 business process management as well as the business rules management uh, with exact analysis uh, so to the extent that you know instead of taking a left turn i want to take a right turn but only in these particular uh, circumstances we're going to have a uh, much more flexibility than what we've had with exact analysis in the past. So, you know, we've talked about scheduling in the past. We actually had a scheduling module within exact analysis. I think you'll see something like that come uh, fairly soon. Uh, the ability to capture invoices, right? I think that that's something that has been lacking in exact analysis for quite some time, especially for, you know, the independent adjuster community where you might have your favorite Excel document that you just fill out and then upload in exact analysis, but you might have to rekey information each time you do that. Um, you, you'll see some things uh, come in the future to where, um, Frankly, you know, it, it, it will automate even a lot of those kind of mundane tasks, right? Think about like even payment letters, right? That yeah. you, you know, we have tokens built within Xactimate. This is going to be one of the topics that I was going to chat with you about um, related yeah. to, you know, one of those little things that not everybody knows about, but you can build in kind of the document management tokens in Word so that if you are, you know, using payment letters and uploading them as custom documents in Xactimate, uh, that would be an area that I'd probably invest a little bit of time and research if you are having to rekey information into the letters that you're using in Xactimate. If that data exists in Xactimate, we have tokens for it, there should not be a need for you to have to re-enter uh, information. Yeah, and I think tokens, I mean, that functionality has been around for a long time um, and it's, 
it's one of those things if you go to a help room on a big hurricane that people are having trouble it's like i can't get the tokens to so i know i just never used them i can type fast so i <laughs> but, yeah. um but yeah and, and i think uh being able to create an invoice inside of Xactimate or even inside of exact analysis i think where you can just tap through and it's the claim summary in there, the total, the claim automatically populates and those rules for, you know, the, the, the fee schedule, right. We'll, we'll populate yep. everything. And maybe all I have to do is say, well, this one was steep and they had two outbuildings. And then that is a little bit to my fee schedule. Um, being able to do that kind of thing where, where, and, and I, one carrier I know of particular that, that at least used to do it. I don't know anybody else that did, but you could access a form inside of Xactimate for your, the claim summary. There's a damage evaluation that you could just tap through and just like key stuff in and then your invoice and it made the, the process was so fast. I didn't have to get out of Xactimate to do anything. Um, so having- but Yeah, and that still exists. Yeah. That still exists and you know, it's, it's things like that. And those are the hidden gems shall we say, exact mate. Yeah. Some may not call them gems, right? Where there's a really nice capability and it's unique to one particular customer and one workflow and, you know, it's it, it doesn't expand. And so those are the kinds of things that, that I do feel like, you know, need to be brought to the surface so that others can leverage it because you do one work for a particular carrier and you have these advantages and then you work for another carrier that might not have that enabled and, you know, you as an adjuster lose out when, when that happens. And so I think that that needs to also be part of the pressure for um, where we can improve and, and, and how those can make their way to the surface. If we, if they truly are some of the hidden gems, so to speak, we think about all the customization that we've done in the various products that are either profile or data set dependent, right. In terms of preferences, there's a lot there, um, yeah. many, many years of development. These days, there are a growing number of remote work opportunities for independent adjusters. With Scoper Writer programs popping up all over the place, you can do photo and scope in the field, or you can just sit at home in your pajajays and write the estimates on what the scoper got when they were out in the field. And it doesn't matter where you live, as long as you have the internet, you can write claims as a desk adjuster, but you can't get that sweet gig without being licensed. So if you live in Nebraska, which doesn't require an adjuster to be licensed, you still have to have a New York license to write claims somebody scoped in New York, makes sense? Of all the credentials you need as an adjuster, there really is none more important than your adjuster license, especially your first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else, including some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. So you need Adjuster Pro. Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain your adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as an adjuster with resources for every licensing state, including dead simple CE packages. Adjuster Pro is the gold standard for adjuster licensing. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro right now sure so sure. the other thing i was going to mention with exact analysis is the data analytics right we have new tools to be able to get into the data to provide that as a tool we're calling it exact analysis insights in order to be able to uh, drill down into very specific scenarios that uh, you find to be interesting as an example so if you want to look at you know at the industry level uh, what, are, what is happening right now in terms of total number of assignments and the status, as well as growth assessment amount for freeze claims in Houston right now, you could easily do so, right? And if you wanna see what does the spend look like for plumbing for those freeze claims and how does that how is that trending for bid items, right? Plumbing bid items, you can easily see that. And so yeah. the accessibility of the data and doing that at the micro level and then rolling it up to the macro and then comparing it across different segments is a, a key thing that we're, you know, we've, we've always had. It. We've always had the ability to run management reports, activity reports and exact analysis, but anytime you wanted to make a small variation or change, you'd have to go back and, and rerun reports. Now you can slice and dice based upon the variables as, as you see fit. Yeah. And yeah, that, absolutely. And I think especially for on the carrier side, um, that's that's pretty huge so that they can kind of 
you have a better idea of, especially with bid items and, and you know, miscellaneous like specialty items, you know, seeing how often those things are used or maybe tracking audit violations and things like that. Um, what about on the adjuster side? I mean, is there, is there any plans for um, being able to, to provide that kind of data, uh, especially if you can have an invoice that's integrated across the board so that an adjuster can say, look at their grand total of all their invoices or look at the, their cycle time or look at, I know you can kind of track cycle time now, um, but having all those, those metrics so that they can see where they can improve and see where they were, maybe like for their taxes and that kind of thing, if you be, even be able to track yep. expenses. Um, yep, absolutely. So that's one of the things that we're talking about at both on the adjuster side as well as the contractor side, right? If you think about exact analysis, a lot of that exists at the data set level, right? Which is probably going to be like your carrier or sender. So like an I, a large IA firm that might send you the assignment, but you might not be able to aggregate that as well. There is exact analysis SP where you can go in and you can start running some of those reports, but what we're planning on doing is putting exact analysis insights into the hands of of adjusters and contractors at that level. We're, we're thinking about calling it uh, Exact Analysis SP Pro, uh, trying to figure out a way that, that we can give that capability so that you can see not only just your stats relative you know, uh, to estimates that are being written, uh, you know, time in motion studies, cycle time, et cetera, but also maybe how you at an individual level stack up to the industry, right? And being able to compare that yeah. to see you know, how am I doing on average, right? And what's the standard deviation based upon how long it takes for me to contact the customer versus the industry? And hey, pat on the back, I'm doing pretty well with that, <laughs> right? So I, I can see certainly good uh, opportunities with that. Uh, yeah, and listen, I, I think that that could be a great piece of like individual marketing. So an adjuster can say, you know, and here's my, here's my uh, exact uh, adjuster score. Right, and it's maybe it's an aggregate of like a bunch of different metrics. It says, "Well, I'm a 91, right, based on my cycle time, my my accuracy, my you know audit violations, and all that kind of stuff." That might be. I don't know if you guys are planning that, but that's kind of that'd be a kind of a cool idea that you could put across the top of your resume that, that you could, you know, that that the IA firms could access, you know, a list of adjusters, and then have they could have like an aggregate score, like how how good they're doing on there all or whatever the metrics are. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about even adding that to like a certified trainer uh, program or just do the, you know, the training certifications, right? Level three certification. And then with that, maybe it's augmented with uh, your stats. As an example, you yeah. achieve this, this level of productivity. So that might be another uh, driver that could uh, be tied to it. And, Game you know, and, and for affiliate trainers, right? It, yeah. it could certainly be a driver for them as well that, you know, this is one way, right? And I know you, you do a lot of uh, focus on training and, you know, we appreciate that. We love that. Same thing with other affiliate trainers out there. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's good. And that might be another way that, you know, you promote, you know, kind of a differentiated offering um, as it relates to training. So Sure, sure. That's, uh, that's actually a pretty cool idea. So, um, let's kind of shift gears a little bit. I, a lot of adjusters, if you get on social media at all, at media at all you see all kinds of stuff, obviously. But one of the most frequent questions that we get is, um, what kind of laptop should somebody use? I have an answer, but I'm curious, kind of from your from the developer's pers perspective, like what do you guys recommend? Taking into consideration that whatever they get is going to be fulfill the minimum and, and probably the recommended specs. I mean, are they looking at like a $4,000 gaming laptop or can they get the, you know, the disposable, semi-disposable manager special from Costco? Like, what do you guys? As an independent adjuster, do you feel like you only have bad, expensive choices for health insurance plans? And when you have to use the insurance, you'll have to pay a lot out of pocket? Makes you wonder why you even have insurance in the first place. The stakes are high. Having no coverage puts you and your family at risk. It doesn't have to be this way. You want peace of mind with common sense health coverage you can count on that doesn't include things you don't need. You need real insurance with world-class protection from established carriers, not health sharing and not cobbled together prepaid medical. And you shouldn't have to wait for it. 
Get approved in days, not weeks. There is no risk and no cost to see if you qualify for these high quality plans. Not everybody will qualify, but you've got nothing to lose by getting a free consultation. Visit adjustertv.com slash health for more information and to apply. So I think that this was a stronger um, issue in the past when, especially with version 28. So version 28, to get a little bit technical, it's it's a 32-bit um, yeah. you know, application, right? It can't run on a 64-bit processor. With, with the new desktop application, X1, uh, that does run on 64 bits. So, you know, to the extent that you might have had uh, more capability on, on that machine in version 28, you wouldn't be able to leverage it, right? And, and so that's where you would still run out of out of memory. You would have crashes um, in some of you know in the older version. And we've seen people that have gone to X1 uh, who use the same hardware, and those troubles, you know, to a certain extent, start to disappear. Um, especially with some of the out of memory crashes that we we're seeing, just because it's a 64 bit application. And so, right, I was going to kind of joke around and say, well, that's a personal question for a personal computer, you know, choice, yeah. but it kind of is, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Because, you know, some people might need a larger display, right? So display is going to be a factor, right? And, sure. you know, and, and as it relates to Xactimate, there's still a lot of work that has to be done outside of Xactimate when you start thinking about some of the letters and forms that have to be filled out based upon whatever requirements the customer might have. And so, you know, those kind of go into that kind of personal decision, if you will, for what kind of adjuster, um, you know, you're prone to dropping your laptop off a roof. <laughs> Are you going to be right. using a combination of Xactimate Mobile with X1 and leveraging the cloud? Maybe if you want to jump between the two. So, you know, for example, if you want to take pictures through the lens on your mobile device for certain claims and have it sync up uh, to the cloud and then just pull it down in X1 to finalize the estimate, then you might have a different strategy. So it's kind of a tough question to answer. Me personally, I like having more horsepower, right? You can never get enough horsepower. <laughs> and so, right, so to the extent of what it is that you're doing on the machine, if you're using it for more than Xactimate, if you're running a claims management system and Xactimate and 10 other applications, right, it's in your best interest to get a little bit more horsepower. Um, you know, you, you, you buy the better tool for the job. Um, so I wouldn't go, you know, there is a dichotomy. I don't think you need the super expensive, flashy gaming machine. I don't think you need the, you know, the the bottom of the barrel, uh, you know, bargain machine as well. I think you want to try to find a little bit of a happy medium, but do pay attention to the recommended system requirements, because I think that that will um, be in, in your best interest. But it is still a very personal decision, right, depending upon your strategy on how you adjust claims. Speaking of personal decisions, <laughs> any plans to bring Xactimate to the Mac operating system? You know, I've heard that one a lot. Uh, we get a lot of internal pressure as well. Uh, I have a Mac. Uh, I like using the Mac. I would like to be able to use Xactimate on it. Um, we're a ways out, right, before we would. Yes, I see it. Beautiful MacBook <laughs> Pro. <laughs> They're great machines. They really uh, we're a little bit we're a little bit of a ways out for that. I will tell you though that with um, with Xactimate Online, uh, we're in the process of a rewrite right now, and you're going to see a lot more be built directly into uh, you know, HTML5, uh, JavaScript in particular with uh, the technology React and. Uh, you know, eventually you'll be able to do everything you need in Xactimate directly in Chrome. Um, and so it's coming, it's just taking a little bit longer. It was tied to uh, Internet Explorer and Silverlight, uh, but it it is being rewritten as we speak. We do have a beta out right now, um, but eventually you'll get to the point where you can at least write an online estimate uh, on a Mac in Chrome. Okay, well, hey, listen. Or Safari, I mean, that's... or Safari if you prefer. Sure. I mean, I, I think that that's uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty good leap and a, and a definitely a nice stepping stone. I, from twenty, I want to say from twenty thirteen for about five years after about twenty eighteen, I ran claims on a boot camp partition on a twenty thirteen MacBook Pro. Uh, I don't think it crashed one time. 
And I don't know. Yeah. I've, you know, I've ran boot camp and a VM and have used Xactimate on it as well. I'd, you know, if I was going to use that on a daily basis, I would use boot camp and, you know, partition it out and yeah. run windows on, but you know, I, I, the hard part is when you switch back and forth with windows and, you know, the, the command key versus your call key. Right. Yeah. Just, it's annoying. It's annoying for me personally, but it is. And I, I, I stopped doing it because I was like, well, you know, I, I use my Mac for a lot of other stuff that, you know, it's been, especially being a catastrophe adjuster, taking your, your gear out of the road. Um, I think even if it sits in the hotel room the whole time, it's stuff still gets banged around. It's being, it, you can be rough on gear when it's out on the road. And I, I would always write claims up on site. So I'm taking my laptop with me, you know, so I can, somebody calls and I need to update the, the file. It's right there. I don't have to wait till later. When you look at the new iPad Pro and you look at like, you know, an Otter case and, you know, there's some really great co cases oh, out yeah. there for iPads, right, that are very inexpensive. You, you may have what you need. You can be able to capture your images directly off of it. You'll get your measurements, you know, and put into Sketch and mobile, right? I mean, I, I'd take a look at that. Um, that, that, would be, that would be one area that I would, I would put a little bit of focus on. Sure, absolutely. And I th you know, is it possible to do a, a complete claims workflow start to finish with the notes and the, you know, or will it would it be? Is it something that could be in the in the roadmap where you can do it in voice? You can do all that stuff just on the iPad, just like cut the computer yeah. So completely? I'd have to look into the various payment letters. Um, it depends upon if there are custom payment letters based upon a particular profile and whether they're all available. But I'm I'm thinking that they are. I'd have to verify that, though, uh, depending upon the profile and and what the letter is that you're using. So, right, some of like the the Word doc, you know, uh, uh, tokens, for example, that may not work as as I'm thinking about on mobile. But I'd have to validate that. We we can answer that question as a follow up, though. Sure, sure. But yeah, for for the most part, I think you'd be able to do just about everything you need to. And, you know, one of the things we, I think you'd asked uh, to touch on was just kind of the headache of taking and labeling photos, right? So to the extent that, yes. you know, you can capture the picture through the lens, right? You're, you can, you can create essentially your, um, your library from there. And then you could just use voice notes, right? To fill in the details uh, for labeling the picture and move through them fairly quickly as you're actually taking the picture, labeling it through the voice note. You know, that might be one way to save a little bit of the time uh, that there, there are going to be future capabilities that, that make that much easier from, you know, an image interpretation perspective. But, you know, for the time being, uh, capturing it directly through the lens, having it go right into the estimate and having it organized in the particular format that you want, you know, that's that's a pretty good starting point, I think. It is for sure. And I, it, it takes a, a big part of that process from getting a photo out of your camera into the machine and then finding it in the images and then importing and then going in into labeling, um, if it's doing it automatically on the fly, and if you're able to, especially if you're, I think if you're able to label as you go, so that it's it's not like you're sitting there and spending however much time, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, or whatever it is, just clickety clacking on your type or, or your keyboard. People out there are putting apps together for this problem because it's a it's it's probably the, one of the biggest things that people complain about when they're trying to like increase their cycle time and increase their production they're always running into labeling because not a lot of people know how to type or not as many people i guess but it's, it, in our community there's a lot there's there's um there seems to be people who maybe are coming from another career where they didn't use a computer very much or they didn't need to for, yep. you know for whatever I've reason trained a lot of them yeah <laughs> yes. and so they yeah. they don't have like they never really learned to type very fast just because it wasn't something that they needed to do. And now like they have to type all the time in all their, their files. Um, one particular app that I saw, um, you can, when you take the picture, you can just tap like labels, you know, uh -huh. this exterior Tag. front side, it's a uh, front slope, it's this, it's this, it's this. And then it just puts that all into the name of the, the, the image and then it's done. Um, yep. Even just doing something like that, where I just stand there instead of having to go front of risk. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
Hey, hey, Mr. Insured, how's it going? It's going great today. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. This is actually Guy Grant from Veteran Adjusting School. So you want to learn claims from the most experienced veteran adjusters, but you can't find anybody who will let you ride along with them? Then let me tell you about Adjuster TV Plus. Developed by Adjuster TV and its industry partners, including the high-end training center Veterans Adjusting School in Arizona, Adjuster TV Plus is a growing library of in-depth training videos created just for independent adjusters. Learn scoping and estimating from professional trainers and adjusters. Learn how to handle customer interactions with confidence. Learn the ins and outs of scoping and estimating exterior hail claims. And detailed videos about how to handle smoke, ice dam, water claims, and auto claims. Adjuster TV Plus also features the very best of three years of Adjuster TV's YouTube videos. Educational, entertaining, and inspiring. Come ride along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Well, and, and even with image interpretation, to have your preferred tags on there that yeah. would be mapped to an image that you might take. And when you take the picture, it takes your preferred tags and automatically inserts it. And then you can tap for whatever's needed beyond that. So, you know, that might even be the next step beyond that in terms of, you know, just automating uh, the you know, the labels on those pictures based upon your own preferences and adjuster, because, you know, that, that can be kind of difficult depending upon, you know, the hierarchy there for, okay, I'm at the risk. So I'm going to go through the hierarchy and here's the picture of the risk. And then I take the picture and then label it. So, you know, to the extent that we can, you know, start to model some of those things out, pre-fill it. Um, I think that that would be probably a, a better return uh, for adjusters on, on the labeling aspect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just a matter of whichever thing is fastest. I mean, I honestly, it's like it's, you know, we talk about um, all the, the the little workflow things and where things are in exact May, but we were talking about you know, if I just had a way, of just like a like a, a, a what, what do you call it, like an Omni search function, like on the Mac, like I can hit Command Spacebar and find any file or any application on the whole computer. Like I don't ever go to the dock or the anything else. I just command space park, command space park. That it doesn't matter where anything's located then, because it's just like there's a, a shortcut, and I just type in activity diary, and it pops up on my screen. That would be yeah. That's uh, that's a good thought. In fact, I think I was talking to uh, Nick Sykes, who heads up the ExactMate team. Yeah, uh, he had made made, made mention of of uh, something to that effect. So. Yeah, there there are those types of uh, uh, concepts that we're we're looking at. There's, you know, and we talked about you know referencing the video, right? The keyboard shortcuts, and I I trained keyboard shortcuts in the in the other versions, and so uh, I think we're pretty well aligned on that, Matt, <laughs> related to the benefit <laughs> of it. Because you know keyboard shortcuts, you know, were money, right? Time is money, and and that saved yeah. a lot of time, and so. It's things like that that we're we're putting more investment into, and you know that's one of the things that you know we expect in terms of an ongoing conversation is, you know, your feedback and and our obligation to you and the adjuster community to uh, execute on those things and and improve right some of those things that are uh, time time killers right now, and uh, so I, I think there's a lot of really good things that we have that are that are coming out. Uh, on a number of different uh, 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 avenues that I think will save a lot of time for adjusters yeah, and, yeah. and contractors and, you know, the, the full segment of, of our user population. Absolutely. Absolutely. And having been a desk adjuster, um, having faster processes, being able to get a more accurate um, scope from, from a field adjuster. If I'm, if I'm getting the file from somebody else, you know, I want to be sure that when I write something up or if it's written up already, that it's going to be, it's going to be accurate because then if it's not and the contractor comes out and he measures it and comes up with something different, then it's like, now it's, a, now it's all my desk. It's a bunch of extra work and having those, you know, the technology we have these days, I mean, it's, it, there's no downside to it as far as I can see. It's, it's just makes everybody's life a lot easier, um, speeds things up, um, makes it easier to communicate with the insured, to have a, a better discussion with the contractor, um, and to not have overwrites or have underwrites 
Um, you know, as, as the adjuster, whether you're a staff adjuster or you're an independent adjuster, that's, that's part of your metric is like you get QA'd and they're checking, you know, the QA person goes out and writes the estimate, you know, strictly with the estimating guidelines um, and sees where you fall on that. And then you get graded on it and it's, it, it's part of your performance review and for your job, right? Um, and it, especially as a staff adjuster, I mean, it can affect your, your income. You may not get a big a bonus, you know, if you didn't do as well. Um, so being able to get much more accurate data out of the tools um, helps the, the claims process all the way around. I'm, like I said, I'm really excited to see what you guys have coming down the pike. And, and I know um, I'm patient. Um, I've seen I've seen a lot of good improvements in Xactimate over the years, and I, I I see a lot of really cool ones in the near term. And I'm really I'm really I'm just very grateful that you guys reached out to me to kind of chat about it and stuff, and um, so that we could kind of start this discussion and and uh, see what we could do kind of together with with along with our community to um, help you guys make make the tool as user friendly as possible, reduce that learning curve make our cycle times faster so that we can serve customers faster and, and make it, you know, to where we're able to handle more claims in a shorter period of time, high quality claims, which is, you know, all the way around is the most important thing. Yep. The first time around. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Preventing those mistakes before they happen. And yeah. So, so, you know, we're, we're also very excited to, to work with you closely on that. And, you know, <laughs> It's it's funny that you. I mean, not funny. I appreciate it actually more than anything. You say that you're patient. I'm probably the most, besides our president, I'm probably one of the other more impatient people, <laughs> right, to get these things moving and out the door and and have that positive impact because, you know, it it, it does matter and and that's what I think gives me meaning in my job is when we do have that aha moment and you know, when we release something and, and you say, do you know how amazing this is for me? You know, that's what, you know, that's what I think most, if not everyone uh, within our company strives for and what we're excited about. And so we continue to push on that and, and, you know, we're not, we're not leaning back. We're leaning forward. We're leaning into that and we want to innovate, right? InsureTech is coming. It is here. Uh, you're seeing a lot of other really cool things. We talked about Hover. Uh, we talked about Matterport. And, you know, we want to very much contribute to that uh, in a thoughtful and innovative way and being, you know, still being cautious and careful to not disrupt uh, current process, right? And you talked about that, right, where you'd said, uh, <laughs> I know my process. I know that you go here into Xactimate to get this. And if you go there, then you can get that. And if we change that, <laughs> how mad are you <laughs> that we changed it? And so we, we're always email. kind of fighting that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, it's because you have to relearn something. You don't have time. Yeah. Right? Nobody has time to, to relearn it. And so we're trying to be really careful to really impact things uh, behind the scenes in a very positive way uh, without having those, those negative implications of, something just changed and I have to train 10,000 people on a whole new process. Right. And that's right, what we're right. also very cognizant of. Sure. Of course. And I, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, the, the older I get, the more I realize, the less I know. And I, you, you start to see that like, there's actually a name for it. I think it's called the Dunning Kruger effect. Like if say, for example, if you were like, wanted to get into photography, right. So you buy a little, like a, like a $600 camera on a $300 lens. And you've been, a, you've been a photographer for a year and you kind of have this cocky attitude, like you know a lot because you don't think there's a whole lot more else you need to know, right? You think you maybe you know about 70 to 80% of what there is to know about photography, but then you, then you st stand the person who's been doing it for 10 years next to them and they know that they only know about 10% even though they have way more experience than the, the, this other person, they know that there's a lot that they don't know because every, every year they're like, oh, I didn't know that. That's something new. So I, I, I find that in my, my journey with a lot of this stuff is that I, I see that um, there are certain things that I, that come up in front of me like, well, you know, a, a big carrier is gonna have to retrain 
30,000 people if I want to try to get something changed in Xactimate to make it slightly easier for myself, right? Which would cost them who knows how much money, right? Um, so being able to have a kind of a, an idea of the bigger picture, I think, is what kind of helps me to be a little patient with it. Um, I know it's going to happen because I think it kind of has to happen um, because a lot of comp- there's a lot of small app people out there kind of like nipping at your heels a little bit, trying to make an app that's going to, you know, take off and be the thing that everybody starts to use. Um, but again, I think you guys, you're, I'm encouraged by your, your wanting to really lean into it and to, uh, um, because I don't, honestly, I don't know that you really have a choice. I mean, if, if you just kind of kept like Xactimate 27.5, then something would come along and, you know, that. It should be good, right? It would disrupt it, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we've got to innovate, right? We've got to continue to innovate, and you know, and we can't we can't be all things to everybody, and and that's why we have a pretty solid uh, integration plan going forward, right? And you know, to the extent that somebody creates a great application that you know we have no interest in in building, or even if we do. We still want to provide choice to our customers so that they can integrate or leverage those things that we do have in the applications. And so you'll see a lot of that continually happening happening in the future as well, especially as it relates to, you know, easier, quicker integrations, right, that are API based and not kind of the longer drawn out uh, transfer of a large file. Uh, So there's there's a lot of things, like I said before, that are happening underneath the sheet, so to speak. Um, that are going to improve uh, a lot of these these kinds of workflows and up to and including uh, some of the integrations. And so you know, I'm excited about it. I probably can't go into too much detail. Um, sure. But you're kind of seeing me wanting to step into it, but there's we, we'd have to take the rest of the day probably to get through all of it. <laughs> there's a lot going Once on. Once I stop recording, you can tell me everything. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> um one last quick question for you is are you guys planning on having uh elevate be in person next year you think we sure hope so uh we would love for that to be in person it'll probably be a hybrid right there i think that there were advantages of of four people to attend remotely right it was it was more convenient you didn't have to spend a day traveling but then a lot of the networking a lot of the connections a lot of those side conversations uh, were missed. And so any conference that you didn't go to, I think everybody recognizes that that was the big missed opportunity, right? Whether it's PIR or I think you went to NACA, right? And and so, you know, being in person, you just can't replace it. And so our hope is that we'll, we'll be in person, but leverage the good that came from doing it remotely as well. What's your preference? Oh, I like in person 100%. Yeah. I want to be able to like shake hands with people and look them in the eye and, and talk to them. And cause you, and you just run into people on the concourse and then like at, at, during the breaks or sitting next to somebody in a breakout session where they're just like, I don't know, you, you make a lot of, you, 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 a lot of relationships are started at, at in-person conferences. And I think a lot of relationships are strengthened with those kind of things. And I personally primarily look at them as, as networking opportunities. Um, for you guys, being able to go to the user experience lab and get your hands on a thing and, you know, walk it around the room and, look, you know, get the measurements and, and mess with the technology and talk to the developers at all the stations. I mean, that's that's also, I think, in particular for, for Veras, I mean, you guys, you're, as a technology company, you kind of want to have people, like, get their hands on stuff that you're working on. I remember back in 2012, I saw one of the first iterations of old sketch cam thing that they were that you guys had, and it worked pretty. I was pretty cool. I was like, "Oh, this is really yeah. neat." And then you know, so it's been in development for a long time, right? And as the technology catches up, um, but the virtual things those are also beneficial to people in particular. I think if they're, you know, if there's training or continuing ed or, or things like that, or, or or even like panels or Q and A where you can. Instead of having people like walk up to a microphone and say, hi, I'm Kevin. And um, my question is, you can t- type it in, right? And then everybody's questions get answered. And I think it may, it, that may make for a richer experience. So I think going with a hybrid, um, if you want to have all those different sort of facets to a, a convention is probably the way to go. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that's where we'll, where, where we'll land. Marketing runs it. We'll see. We have a lot of really creative people in marketing. So yeah. I'm sure we'll have, you know, best of both worlds. Very cool. Very cool. You had said to me, uh, was it January, maybe December? Like one of the, I think it was the first time we spoke. Um, you had said that in six months, you wanted to, me to be able to make a video that said something totally different about, is that still, we still on a timeline for that or what, well, what are we looking at? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, as we, as we evaluate some of the keyboard shortcuts that are missing as you get into technology that, that you have given feedback on, I want you to be able to take credit for some of those things and say, you know, on behalf of the adjuster community, this is something, you know, if you go back to your December video, you said, eh, you know, that they'll, they'll never listen to me. Right. And that <laughs> bothered me. It's like, yeah, well, it's no, I mean, that's an important, you know, message that you had and we do listen. Right. And, and that's a very key thing is, you know, I want to do a lot less talking, a lot more listening, and then I'll even more so execution and delivering on, on those things that do create value for you. So that's, you know, so for me, it was, I think it was a great message. Um, and, you know, we're, 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 this is a small industry, right? We're in it together and we're, we, we want to create more value uh, than we capture. And, and that's really important to us. And, and it's something that we strive for on a daily basis. Sure. Sure. And I will say I, and, in in fairness, I that was that video was not like exclusively about you guys. <laughs> oh, I know that. I know it was. That, a, but... It's kind of a general gripe that I have about software development. It seems like, um, but I kind of picked on you a little bit uh, because you're kind of like, you know, that's, you're the piece of software we use most of the time as adjusters. But it's not it's not limited to you guys. You know, um, especially on the not to go too deep into it, but on the carrier side, I mean, they've got a lot of stuff that, that's, I mean, makes it's, you know, a DOS terminal screen and you got to like know some basic programming in order to <laughs> record a check. I mean, it's just ridiculous in the 21st century. So, I, and they, they, they'll nickel and dime over here and then spend a bazillion dollars on a great big brand new campus over here. and. So I don't know. That was, that's just me. I mean, I just, I'm just, you know, airing but, but it. But I took it all in good spirits, right? You were yeah. very gracious, right? You were very complimentary. We do a lot of things great, right? Within exact or within various. And, I, and you commented on that, right? And yeah. so it was a great opportunity for me to stand up and say, I hear you. Let's do something about it together. Well, Aaron, I really appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming on. And, and uh, again, I can't express my gratitude enough that you guys are, are, are uh, kind of reaching out in, in such a personal way to this community um, to get our feedback and our ideas and our thoughts about the, the software that everybody uses to earn a living. So I really appreciate that. So thank you. Yep, you're very welcome. And, and thank you as well for, uh, you know, for putting this on, right? I think it does make a difference. And, yeah, time will tell. I, I think we'll I think we'll do some cool things. If you enjoyed this episode of Adjuster TV Radio, leave us a five star review on iTunes. Find more episodes at adjustertv.com slash podcast. This is Adjuster TV. Do you know how hard it is to order a water at McDonald's? What? I wore a sub, it'd be like, yeah, can I get a egg McMuffin and uh, just a large water, please? And there's silence for like 10 seconds. Yeah, I don't, I can't do that on my computer. I'm like, take a big <laughs> cup and put water in it. I mean, how hard could it be? Well, sure, let me run to the bathroom and I'll fill up the cup for you. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I'll, we'll put some water in your cup. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> That's not what I wanted.